So here we have the human respiratory tract, the lungs. And here is the inferior vena cava, descending aorta, the pulmonary arteries, and the trachea. And behind the trachea is the esophagus. Again, the causative agents are mainly the bacteria, virus, and fungi. And these causative agents can cause pneumonia just by being inhaled in into the lungs through the nose or mouth. And they can cause an infection if we have a, if we have a bad pulmonary defense, as we have learned. But there are ways of transmission, aside from being inhaled into the lungs. So the first one is essentially inhalation of infected aerosols. Two can be aspiration of organisms that colonize the oropharynx. Three can be aspiration of stomach content. There can also be hematological spread through the, from the inferior vena cava or superior vena cava, for example, such as from the, such as, um, such as spread from a hand infection or kidney infection. So basically, pneumonia is a secondary infection. There can also be direct inoculation as a way of transmission. So we categorized pneumonia before into the areas of lung affected, which is into lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. But we can also categorize pneumonia into the location where the infection was acquired, as well as the cause of infection, such as aspiration pneumonia, and also the severity, chronic pneumonia. So the types of pneumonia that we will look at, as well as its causative agents, are the community-acquired pneumonia, nosocomial pneumonia, uh, aspiration pneumonia, and chronic pneumonia. Let us begin with a community-acquired pneumonia. Community-acquired pneumonia is mostly bacterial or viral. It's often bacterial infection following an upper respiratory tract infection of a viral origin. Causative agents include streptococcus pneumonia, Haemophilus influenza, Moraxella catarralis, as well as uh, influenza virus and RSV. Now, nosocomial pneumonia, also known as the hospital-acquired pneumonia. Nosocomial pneumonia is pneumonia that is not uh, incubating at the time of admission to the hospital and develops in a patient hospitalized for longer than 48 hours. So essentially, it's a pneumonia, the lung infection after being admitted to hospital. So it's a causative agent is from the hospital. And these causative agents can be the enterobacteria, pseudomonas species, as well as Staphylococcus aureus, um, also taking into account methicillin resistance to Staphylococcus aureus. Now, aspiration pneumonia, which is also very common in hospital settings, so it can be kind of under nosocomial pneumonia. But aspir aspiration pneumonia occurs in markedly debilitated or in unconscious patients or during vomiting, when the patient's vomiting, because they can aspirate stomach content with gut, with bacteria. So aspiration pneumonia often leads to abscess formation, which is bad. Let us take a closer look at complications with abscess formation in the lungs. So lung abscess complications. So when you develop a lung abscess from aspiration pneumonia, there can be complications such as extension to the, it can extend to the pleural cavity. You can have hemorrhage. You can develop brain abscess, meningitis, if it travels, if it can travel through the blood to the brain. And you can also develop secondary amyloidosis. Now, so back to aspiration pneumonia. Aspiration pneumonia usually uh, occurs in the right lung because of the anatomical variation. So the right lung, it has a wider, uh, essentially, hilum, and uh, it's, it's often more vertical, and so things can get into the right lung easier. Causative agents of aspiration pneumonia include streptococcus and staphylococcus aureus, um, and also gram-negative species from the uh, gram-negative bacteria from the gastrointestinal tract. Lastly, we will look at chronic pneumonia, and it's usually involving fungus, fungal causative agents, and occurs usually in immunocompromised patients. Four things for chronic pneumonia: histoplasmosis, tuberculosis 
aspergillus, as well as nocardia. Okay, so those are the four types we looked at. Community-acquired, nosocomial, aspiration, and chronic pneumonia. And there can be complications of pneumonia. These are abscess formation, as we have just talked about, because it's dangerous. Abscess formation leads to tissue destruction, amongst many other things. Um, emphyema, as well as bacteremic dissemination. So it can cause uh, complications of pneumonia. It can cause, essentially, sepsis. Okay, so when a patient presents with signs and symptoms of a lung infection. It is important to perform investigations to rule out certain things and to, uh, you know, diagnose pneumonia. So things that we can do, chest x-ray. We can see and potentially diagnose the type of pneumonia uh, using a chest x-ray according to where it affects the lungs. It can be consolidation to a lobe. It can be consolidated to a lobe or termed lobar pneumonia, or it can be patchy like bronchopneumonia. Another investigation is sputum testing, gram stain, to identify the bacteria using uh, micro microscopy culture and sensitivity testing. You can also perform urine antigen testing to identify uh, the bacteria Streptococcus pneumonia or Legionella um, in case it has spread or is, is a result of a UTI. Four. Blood testing, full blood count, for example. Wide blood cells are up or down, which will indicate severity. Um, neutrophilia is indicative of bacterial infection. You can also have hemolytic anemia, which suggests mycoplasma um, as, an, as a causative agent. E, um, electrolyte urea creatinine testing. A urea high indicates the severity. Liver function test you can also perform, and it's abnormal if the base uh, of the pneumonia inflames essentially the liver. So the lower portion of the lung inflames the liver. We can also perform blood culture for, bac for bacteria involvement. So if it's bacteria bacteremia, it's pretty severe because it can lead to sepsis. So next is the management and treatment of pneumonia. So here we have a patient with pneumonia. Oxygen. All patients with tachypnea, hypoxemia, hypotension, and acidosis requires oxygen. Before looking at the other, other management, it's important to recap or know the cardinal signs of pneumonia. So we know the signs and symptoms, but the cardinal signs of pneumonia, again, um, if you can remember, we can remember it as CDEF. So C stands for chest pain. D stands for dyspnea, E stands for exudate, sputum, and F is for fever. Okay, let's continue with the management. So, number one, oxygen. Two, intravenous fluids for severe patients, elderly, and those who are vomiting. Three, uh, for pain, we use pain management. NSAIDs are usually sufficient, but opioids can be used. But it can be dangerous because it can lead to respiratory uh, depression. But if it's... You know, monitored, it's good. Four, use of antibiotics. So, use of antibiotics can be complicated. So, essentially, you don't know the causative agent. So, you have to do empirical therapy. When performing empir empirical therapy, it's important to look at a few factors. These are, what is the most likely pathogen? The risk for antimicrobial resistance? And if the person has any medical comorbidities or allergies. So the use of empirical therapy is different for, you know, nosocomial, for community, for aspiration, for all the different types of pneumonia, it's usually different. Some overlap. So the use of empirical therapy for community-acquired pneumonia, you use two things. Number one, are beta-lactams, such as your penicillins, which will help you target your gram-positive bacteria. The second one, you can use macrolides, which are your myosins. Macrolides can help you target your gram-negative bacteria. Of course, this is simplistic in that macrolides can also target your gram-positive. But essentially what you're doing with empirical therapy is that you are trying to cover uh, 
the most likely causative agent um, being the bacteria. Of course, it might not be a bacteria, it might be a virus, and so um, you have to perform further investigations um, until you find the causative agent. But this is, the empirical therapy is important so that it can cover uh, the main culprits, the bacteria, if, if they are the cause. So how do these antibiotics work? Well, here um, we're looking at a bacteria with its DNA, it's green, but we don't know what bacteria it is, so we use empirical therapy. So firstly, let's look at beta-lactams. Now, beta-lactams, essentially what they do is they target the cell wall of the bacteria, which is essentially uh, uh, made up of peptidoglycan. The beta-lactams used for uh, pneumonia include amoxicillin and flucoxicillin, uh, specifically targeting staph species. So in the bacteria, bacteria make proteins all the time. The macrolides um, inhibit this process. Uh, macrolides including uh, clathromycin and erythromycin are used. After you use empirical therapy, uh, the causative agent might be identified following investigation, such as your blood cultures, your, um, your x-rays or whatever. And so after you've identified the causative agent, um, and if it is a bacteria and you know what, what type of bacteria it is, you have to change your antibiotic that will specifically target that bacteria. Hope that made sense. Now, just to, in summary, for uncomplicated community-acquired pneumonia, you use oral antibiotics. But for, co for complicated pneumonia, uh, community-acquired pneumonia, you would use IV intravenous antibiotics so that it can get into the system faster. Hope you enjoyed this video on pneumonia. Thank you for watching.